Welcome to on-screen learning. Energy systems during exercise. Different exercises will employ different energy systems, depending on the exercise's type, intensity, and duration. While some exercises are predominantly aerobic and others anaerobic, different intensities and durations may lead to various energy systems. Hence, different exercises may require a different percentage of various energy systems. ATP is the primary energy currency in the cells and is made through a breakdown of organic compound in a process known as cellular respiration. Thus, the biochemical pathway used to produce ATP is the glycolysis process. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glycogen stores in the body. The other glycolysis products, depending on oxygen availability or not, will either enter fermentation or anaerobic or aerobic. ATP provides energy through the breaking of the covalent bond that holds the last phosphate group to the rest. The bond is easily broken, hence much more energy is released than was needed to break the bond. Enzyme ATPase is responsible for breaking the bond, releasing energy for muscle activities. ATP is the only energy source that the body's muscles can use for energy. However, ATP stores are limited in the muscle cells, and their energy can be used up during muscle activities for about 3 to 4 seconds. Thus, the body has to ensure a constant supply of ATP for there to be a sustained activity. The body, therefore, has energy systems that will provide energy during exercises or activities. These systems include ATP, PC, lactic acid, and aerobic. ATP PC system. It is also known as the alactic system. This system is purely anaerobic as the respiratory and cardiovascular system cannot provide oxygen rapidly for immediate, instantaneous, brief exercises or activities. It operates without oxygen even though it can do so aerobically and does not give rise to any waste product except heat. This happens in the sarcoplasm of muscle cells. Since ATP is stored in the muscles, it can be used immediately to give muscle energy for high-intensity, short-duration exercises. Hence, it is ideal for short bursts of energy and exercises. For example, 100-meter sprint, long jump, discus throw, shot put, and javelin. In other sporting activities where maximum effort is needed for a brief high-intensity workout like kicking a ball in a soccer match or rugby or instantaneous sprint to reach out to the ball, the ATP PC system is largely employed. However, since ATP stores are limited in the body, this system is short-lived and can last up to 8 seconds at a maximum intensity but can have a maximum of 12 seconds. Thus, this system is capable of sustaining an entire sprint lasting less than 10 seconds. If the exercise is sustained beyond this period at high intensity, the body will shift to a different energy system due to ATP's depletion. ATP PC system is restored upon recovery of the body, which may last up to an average of 2 minutes. The creatine and PI are resynthesized to phosphocreatine upon recovery from the aerobic systems. The ADP can then be converted back to ATP, ready to be used for another short burst of energy using the energy from PC breakdown. This explains why players in a game can have numerous brief moments of sprinting, diving for a ball, or kicking a ball. The other benefit of the ATP PC system is that it has no fatiguing byproduct. Lactic Acid System Once the ATP PC system is depleted, glycogen is broken down in the liver and muscles to give glucose, which is then broken into pyruvate and later lactic acid in the absence of oxygen or anaerobic respiration. Phosphofructokinase is the enzyme responsible for breaking glucose into pyruvate, while lactate dehydrogenase further breaks it into lactic acid in the absence of oxygen. Even though it is a more complex and slower system than ATP-PC, it is still a faster process since it does not use oxygen and relies on the glycogen that is readily available in the muscles. The formation of lactic acid, however, does not lead to the production of ATP, but rather regenerate NAD+. 
which is used to keep the initial glycolysis process on to yield 2 ATP per molecule. The lactic acid system can resynthesize ATP and provide energy to sustain a high intensity but short duration exercise that lasts up to three minutes long. If the intensity continues at the same consistency, it will flatten to exhaustion due to increased lactic acid production surpassing the onset of blood lactate accumulations, or OBLA. This will further activate the pain receptors, hence the net effect is fatigue of the muscles coupled with pain. However, if the intensity is lowered slightly after three minutes, the process may endure longer because of the overall delay in OBLA. An increase in lactic acid from the system negatively affects the enzymes that promote glycolysis, or enzyme inhibits action. Thus, both ATP, PC, and lactic acid systems are unable to provide energy for longer periods of time continuously. Still, they are dependent on aerobic respiration energy systems to help them recover during exercises and after. Part of training adaptation is to have bouts of high-intensity exercises, which will delay the OBLA and prolongs the lactic acid threshold, thus improving one's endurance. This explains why it is possible to have repeated sprints in a match. Aerobic Energy System this is the breakdown of glucose in the presence of oxygen to give energy. It also utilizes fats to provide energy, but requires more oxygen, 15% extra. The stages are mainly the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. The pyruvate produced from glycolysis is prevented from converting into lactic acid due to the presence of oxygen. Instead, it undergoes a series of reactions and then enters the citric cycle or Krebs cycle where two ATP are produced. In the electron transport chain reactions, a total of 34 ATP is produced. The entire aerobic process yields 38 ATP that would be a source of energy for the muscles. In comparison, the aerobic energy system produces more energy than the other two systems combined. This makes it the ideal energy source for longer exercise periods, like for a marathon runner. When exercising, aerobic exercises would draw energy from both glycogen and fats. This provides them with larger potential energy stores than the other two energy systems. And it is capable of giving you the energy your body needs from three minutes to an hour and above. The products, which are carbon dioxide and water, are easily removed from the system and do not cause fatigue or pain with the lactic acid energy system. Since it uses fat to provide energy, it can conserve glycogen stores, further increasing endurance and enabling one to continue with the exercise for an extended period of time. The limiting factor with the aerobic energy system is that ATP cannot be synthesized at the onset of an exercise due to respiratory and cardiovascular system delay in supplying oxygen in the initial stages. Examples of sports that would use aerobic systems on a larger scale include hockey, football, rugby, tennis, distance cycling, swimming, and long distance running or walking. It is safe to say that each exercise requires various energy levels from each of the energy systems. This is because it is hard to attribute one energy system in an exercise as they seldom operate in isolation. Depending on the kind of exercise one indulges in, some may be predominantly aerobic while others are anaerobic. But quite a number utilizes a mixture of all three energy systems. The level of percentages of the different energy being used will, therefore, be the varying factor. For instance, a 100 meter dash will be 95% predominantly ATP PC system, 3% lactic acid, and 2% oxidative or aerobic. A 1500 meter race will predominantly use 20% ATP PC, 55% lactic acid, and around 25% aerobic. Lastly, a marathon would have 5% ATP PC, 5% lactic acid, and 90% aerobic. All three energy systems interact, allowing an individual to perform different exercises with ease.